It's early days, but could this be another perfect season? Four for four is a good start. We'll show you how. And a new era in pro flat track is emerging with Kawasaki leading the charge. We'll explain. And in GNCC, two previous race winners find themselves on the top step. And we talk to Yoshimura Suzuki's rookie superbike ace, Jake Lewis. All that and more only on the Racer X Show. What's up? Thanks for checking in on us. I'm Greg and this is the Racer X Show. Fresh off another trip to the pro motocross races. Glen Helen in SoCal, 200 foot climb up the top of Mount St. Helen. It's something everyone should see. The day was perfect, crowd was thick. Ryan Dungey came away frustrated. I love the intensity to win in that guy, but I've said too much already. Let's get moving. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, soul and passion and by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. We begin with our motocross segment presented by Acherbys. Round two of the 2015 Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship happened in Southern California at the famed Glen Helen Raceway, where a healing Ken Roxon surprised most by being the fastest qualifier, with last week's winner Eli Tomac back in sixth. But it's the race or races that matter. Here's Jason Wygant and Grant Langston with the story. This is the 250 class and your 250 defending champion, Jeremy Martin, who was also the Bud Light fast qualifier this morning. The bike won't start. That's the rest of the field taking off. Now they're gonna bump start the bike. They push it, he jams it into gear. The bike finally fires. Now, this is what happened while the game was dropping. Adam Cincerillo in the green bike gets plowed, runs into uh, Alex Martin and a few others. He crashes as he's getting his bike up. Jeremy Martin, who did get his bike started, gets into the race and then goes to work from next to last. Up front, Jesse Nelson on 28 and 25 of Marvin Muscan. Great battle for the number one spot. Entire first half of the race, they went at it. Finally, Muscan able to uh, secure the lead, and from there, he would go on to a dominant victory. Second moto win of the year for him. And here are your results from that first moto. So Jeremy Martin, who could not even get the bike running until after the race had started, comes all the way back from 40th to 5th. Good run by Mitchell Oldenburg up inside the top 10. Kyle Peters also 7th. That's solid. Well, Jeremy Martin had some bad luck in the first race earlier today. Was glad on the number one to get a good start in the second race until he gets knocked down by Jesse Nelson. And then he's stuck with a pair of Geico Honda riders, Jordan Smith and Matt Bashalia. So he is just about last to start this one. And then Barbara Muscan, your leader, makes a mistake. And the other Martin, Alex, takes the lead. Nelson also in the hunt as well. Muscan would have to go to work on Nelson and then Martin. And little mistake. On the bottom of the hill here by the 31 allows Muscan to get the drive and make the pass uphill. And from there, he would not be headed. 1-1 on the day. He wins both races. Three of four moto wins so far this year. Certainly a happy Frenchman after a strong performance like that. Let's show you the results from this uh, second moto. Oh, actually, it's the overall here. Justin Hill. Good comeback for him following that second with a fifth. He's second, Nelson third. What do they all have in common, Grant, those three riders? They're all in KTM, so a sweep for them on the podium. Ken Roxon, Jason Anderson crash into each other on the first lap. That would uh, ruin Anderson's race completely. Roxon would rally back for eighth place. Justin Barsha leading early on the 51. Ryan Dungey, they're going to use an outside line here to take over the lead. The outside, good momentum, and then inside of the next corner, he's got the number one spot. But everybody's been buzzing about Eli Tomac and the kind of performances he was able to put on in our two motors of the first race. He gets up the second. Dungey stalls for the first time, and that allows Tomac to take over the lead. Dungey was solid in second the entire way until the last lap of the bike stalled again, and he pushed back to sixth. So Tomac, three for three, starting the year off, dare I say it, perfect. So here are the results now. Both Barsha and Nicoletti going to the podium, double podiums for JGR Yamaha. Chad Reed fourth, Pike fifth, so that's three of the Joe Gibbs Racing bikes in the top five. Dungey back to six, that's tough on him. Well, the number three Honda, 
Back by Geico. Catch the whole shot. That's bad news because he has clearly been the fastest rider this year. Good start for Ryan Dungey on the number five, the 51 of Justin Barsha and Ken Roxon. First time we've really seen him up front this year. Watch this. Weston Pike is going to oh. crash. How did he keep the Yamaha underneath him? And how did Brett Metcalf not crash on his Kawasaki? That was incredible. Good saves. And no such trouble for Eli Tomac. He swept to the Glen Helen just like he did last week at Hangtown. He wins by 23 and a half seconds. Well, it made Dungy a minute closer than he was the last time. Dungy said he won't beat us by that much again, and he was at least right about that. Roxon, that's a big podium for him. Barsha outduels Anderson for fourth. In the post-race press conference, Red Bull KTM's Ryan Dungy was, well, like happy with third overall, but pretty frustrated over his bike having stalled. He made sure that we knew that these things happen but you can see how much Dungey wants to win and prove that he's just as fast as Tomac. Now on the opposite side, it was all smiles for Justin Barsha, so stoked on his performance on the day. Next up, Thunder Valley in Lakewood, Colorado. You can catch all the great action on TV. Live first motos on MAV, that's 3 to 5 p.m. East, then slightly delayed on NBCSN at 6.30 p.m. East until 8.30. Set your DVR, and that is our motocross segment presented by Acherby. Now our road race segment presented by Yoshimira, where we turn our attention yet again to the World Superbike Series. We're heading into round six. Kawasaki's Johnny Ray has nearly run the table since race two at round one in Australia, only losing Aragon race two to Factory Ducati's Chaz Davis. But that would change as Ray's teammate, 2013 world champ Tom Sykes, took the double, beating the current world championship leader, Ray, by 3.7 seconds in the first one, over nine in the second one. Former AMA star Chaz Davis double podium for Ducati. Ray still with a 101 point lead over Haslam, with Sykes and Davis hanging around as well. In World Supersport, Keenan Safoglu extends his streak of wins to four in a row as American PJ Jacobson brings it home in fifth. Rumor has it, drama for PJ's team. He might be on a new one. We'll have more on that very soon. But for now, the New Yorker dropped back to third in the World Championship points battle. Last week, we showed you highlights from the new AMA Superbike Championship known as Moto America. And you've seen the name Jake Lewis, who rides for the Yoshimura Suzuki team. But you may not know much about the Superbike rookie who's already logged two podium finishes in only six races. So this is what we do. Please welcome to the Racer X show, Jake Lewis. Jake, good to have you on. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You're 19 years old and now a full factory Superbike racer. How'd you get here? Yeah, I come from a small town in Princeton, Kentucky. It has 7,500 people and uh, one high school, so a really small town. And uh, I grew up dirt track racing. I started when I was four years old and uh, gradually got into road racing. I started doing that when I was eight. And then, uh, you know, I won a lot of amateur awards and pretty much every award you could win along the way to the pro ranks. And uh, I've had a pretty good professional career so far. Uh, when I was 16, I won the Super Sport Championship and then Rookie of the Year in Sport Bike and had a really good season in Sport Bike last year. And then, uh, you know, really grateful to get the opportunity to ride for Yoshimura Suzuki, you know, they've won many Superbike titles, so. Uh, it's a big jump from the 600 Sportbike machine to a factory Superbike. What's it been like? Yeah, you know, it's huge just because I've never rode a 1000 until I got on the Yoshimura bike. Uh, I've always been on 600s, 125, so uh, jumping on a Superbike right away, you know, I had a lot to learn and still have a lot to learn, so. Uh, I'm still struggling a little bit riding it like a 600 and I need to work on my riding to adjust to the 1000 but uh, so far it's going okay you know the crew's working amazing with me and uh, I'm really comfortable on the bike you know being six foot three uh, it definitely fits me a little bit better and uh, oh, wait how is riding a super bike different from a 600 machine yeah you know uh, so far I've just been kind of struggling with uh, the corner speed you know I've always had good corner speed on 125s and 600s but always I've heard everyone say you ride a 1,000 point and shoot, but then, uh, you know, you still have to have corner speed. And I learned that at VR in race two when I was on Gagne and then Bobier for a few laps. Uh, just my corner speed still struggling a little bit. But, you know, we have a really fast bike, so uh, that helps me out quite a bit. So when's the next time that we can see you race? Yeah, this weekend I'm heading up to Wisconsin, you know, for the Superbike doubleheader shootout. Uh, 
looking forward to that weekend and uh, hope to see a lot of fans out there, you know, uh, come by the Suzuki pits, get an autograph and uh, chat with me and Roger, you know, we're going to try to put the Suzukis up on top of the podium and do our best. So uh, hopefully I'll see you there. Jake Lewis from Yoshimura Suzuki, thanks for joining us and good luck this weekend. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Tune into fanschoice.tv to catch 600 Super Sport race action and MotorTrendOnDemand.com for all the Superbike races from Road America. MotoGP will be on Fox Sports 1 at 7.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. That's East Coast from Mugello in Italy. Rossi might extend his lead. We'll see. And that is our road race segment brought to you by Yoshimira. And now, finally, we get to talk about AMA Pro Flat Track. We haven't seen these guys and gals race up the roundy round stuff since uh, Daytona in March. It's May 26th, for those who don't know. And what better way to come back than with a mile oval, Springfield mile to be exact. And to refresh your memory, number two, Kenny Kulbeth leads Brandon Robinson, Sammy Halbert, and number one play to Jared Meese in the championship. To the video. Now on these long tracks, drafting and passing is the name of the game. And if you can keep that draft, that's 90% of the battle. And these days we're seeing some manufacturers in the sport that we haven't seen before. Harley Davidson, of course. That's what Jared Meese and his wife Nicole are racing. But KTM 990 Super Duke, Ducati 1100 Scrambler, the Triumph Bonneville all made the main event. So did the very fast, well-developed Kawasaki EX650. The two riders who flogged the green machines around Illinois State Fairgrounds, number seven, Sammy Halbert, on the Briggs Auto Entry in fourth. Number 42, Brian Smith on the Crosley Radio Entry, leading the way. Number six, Brad Baker, the lone factory rider, was in the mix in third. And the number one plate of Mies in second. To the final lap we go with Chris Carr and Scotty Dubler. If uh, Jared Meese is going to win this, he's going to have to go by right go. now as he goes up the inside and makes the move up the inside. This is probably his best chance. He's going to have to get it through the middle of turns three and four, but the 42 is lined up perfect. If Meese is going to have to be evasive, and there goes the 42 around the outside and wins wow. it. Wow. So Kawasaki wins the GNC1 class, and half the top 10 were Cowies as well. Just off the screen in 11th was Jared Mee's wife, Nicole, with a solid 11. But to the victor goes the interview. Oh, great, man. It was a great race. I mean, uh, I was just telling Jared, man, thanks for keeping it clean. Uh, these miles have been getting a little sketchy these last couple years, and uh, Jared kept it clean, did exactly what I did if I was on a different motorcycle besides a Kawasaki. With his seventh place, Coolbest still leads away. Mee's climbs into second with last year's runner-up Smith still a ways back. But we still have 13 races to go. If you're on your computer, you can catch around four coverage of the Sacramento Mile on FansChoice.tv. It all starts around 2.30 p.m. local, which is 5.30 p.m. on the right coast. Coverage goes for about five hours. Wahoo! To the world of off-road racing, in round seven of the 2015 Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Maxxis, which took place at Marvin's Mountaintop in Masontown, West Virginia, for the fourth annual Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer Run GNCC. And if you remember, after suffering a loss and relief about not having to hammer out a perfect season, factory FMF KTM's Caleb Russell was right here talking about his desire to get back to the middle step of the GNCC podium. So let's find out how he did. Right out of the box, things were looking good for Russell, who would get the jump off the start to claim the $250 All Balls Racing Hole Shot Award and head into the woods, leading the XC1 Pro Class. But during this one, Russell would face a battle with Air Group Rockstar Energy Husqvarna's Ryan Sites. Those two would swap positions multiple times during the first couple of laps. But on lap three, Russell would make the final pass of the race and go on and take the checkers for his sixth overall win of the season. But as Russell told us two weeks ago, Ryan Sipes is starting to get this GNCC thing and has been on a steady incline as he continues to show improvement each round. Sipes, who led the first two laps and battled with the defending champion, Russell, earned his best finish of his GNCC career at the Mountaineer Run with a second overall. After a crash in New York took him out, Thad Duvall rebounds to a third overall finish. But a tip of the cap to Russell, whose margin of victory was about one minute and 30 seconds. Once we got everything figured out, I got back around him and I was like, all right, I'm going to try to get away here. And, uh, you know, I was able to pull a little gap and just uh, keep, keep pulling. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really surprised with Ryan. Uh, for a motocross guy, he's done, he's done pretty good on some of the 
most technical tracks the last the last two. So Russell holds the championship points lead, 79 points ahead of NFAB and Pro Yamaha's Grant Baylor, who finished fourth this go around. So how about this? You can catch GNCC race action on NBC Sports Network Saturday, the 30th round four coverage from Big Buck coming at you. All right, you've seen the GNCC bikes that raced up on Sunday, but let's take you back in time one more day to Saturday and the GNCC ATVs. And yep, it's round seven of the Amsoil GNCC series presented by Maxxis. Now, I have mentioned that Racer X show guest Adam McGill was needing a win to stop the bleeding. Well, the West Virginia native wicked it up in his home state and shut me up. Off the start, a little help from the current champ, NFAB Ampro Yamaha's Walker Fowler wouldn't hurt. A dead engine penalty, he hit the button too early and would have to stop after lap one for 15 seconds before rejoining the fight. Even with Bithel Racing Maxxis Precision's Chris Bithel claiming the $250 Amsoil XC1 Pro Hole Shot Award and leading the XC1 Pro ATV class to the woods on lap one, Adam McGill would work his way into the lead on the second lap, and he would hold that lead for the rest of the two-hour race. However, after his start foul, Fowler would put on a charge, working his way through the pack and gain seven positions on lap two. Fowler continued charging through the race, coming up 10 seconds short of McGill at the finish. As the white flag flew, Chris Boric sat fifth and put together a last lap charge making the pass for third, just two turns before the finish. But congratulations to a well-deserved and needed win by McGill. We had a strategy coming into here and damn, we painted these woods green and we come out on top. I mean, the plan worked, everything worked and we pulled a points lead again and man, I'm pumped, bring on Millfield. So once again, McGill extends his lead to 27 over the number one plate. Next stop for the series, Ohio in less than two weeks time. If you love ATV racing, then make sure you check out ATV MX live this weekend from Ironman. Coverage begins at 2.30 East on RacerTV.com. And you can see it on your telly. Round 3 coverage from Underground on MAV TV at 2.30 in the afternoon on Saturday. Here's the race calendar. Get out and watch the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship at Thunder Valley just outside of Denver, Colorado on Saturday. Moto America races up Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin over the weekend. MotoGP stops in Italy at the awesome Mugello circuit. The fans are crazy Mugello, you gotta get there. AMA Pro Flat Track is in NorCal at the Sacramento Mile. Ken Smith, do it again, go watch. ATV MX is in Crawfordsville, Indiana. For round five of that series, the Weenin Hetrick battle continues. And how about AMA Pro Hill Climb? It's so much fun watching that. Round one happens in Cookville, Tennessee at the Tennessee State Hog Rally. Have fun. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, Soul, and Passion, and by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. Okay, time to go. I'm off to Colorado for round three of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Series. I hope to see you there. But for now, please share the show with everyone. We certainly appreciate it. All right, done, clipped. So for the fine crew here at the Racer X Show, Racer TV, I'm Greg. And remember, we are all racing all the time.